Okay, a question that I get from a ton of you is where do I start if I want to start a podcast? And I love when answers are simpler than we expect them to be. So I wanna tell you about a resource that's changed the game for us with our podcast, and that is Spotify for Podcasters. If you wanna start your own podcast, Spotify has a platform that makes it so, so, so easy. You upload your episodes and then Spotify actually distributes it everywhere onto all platforms and even helps you earn money so that it can be profitable for you and a blessing for you, your family, your people. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast literally from your phone or your computer. So if you don't have a fancy setup, it's okay. You can immediately get started today. Then again, you distribute it to Spotify and everywhere else that podcasts are available. You can also do video podcasts, which sounds like a dream to me. And when you want to take conversations with your people to the next level, you can do Q&A and polls, all sorts of fun things. You can earn money with ads and podcast subscriptions, or you can just get started using what you've got for the good of others and the glory of God. Check out Spotify for podcasters. I use it. I love it. I highly recommend it. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app. I have it on my phone, highly suggest, or go to spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started today. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Go and Tell Gals podcast with Jess Connolly and Kanisha Bikes. Today, we're talking to one of our friends, a woman who runs on mission. We are praying this conversation leaves you fired up and ready to go right where you're at. We're super thankful for you. Let's go. Second podcast episode. Now that we have relaunched, we're back. It's Kenesha, Jess, and Brenna. We're all here. We're ready to talk. How are you doing today, by the way? How are you feeling, Kenesha? I am, you know, honestly, I'm feeling kind of good. I had my little, I love warm drinks. It's kind of part of my morning ritual or my daily ritual. And I had my little London fog with my oat milk and I'm feeling good. How about you? I like all of these things. I like that so much. Oh, I'm doing okay. Uh (laughs) I'm doing all right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I feel like sometimes, you know, how are you is such a loaded question though, right? It is. I know. And I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not the person you should ask because I will say like, I'm a little gassy. I had a nightmare. <laughs> I'm jealous of my sister. Like I'll tell you <laughs> all the business, all the business. Give me all the business. Okay. Yeah. We're diving in. I would say somewhat deep. I like to talk about things in plain sight in a deep way. And so I go and tell girls something that is always in plain sight for us is that we are equipping and encouraging women to run on mission. So our deep dive today is what does mission mean? What do we mean when we say that? Yes. When you hear that phrase, first of all, here's my first question. Does that sound like Christianese to you? I think it can. Yeah. I think it can. I think that, you know, there's a lot of things that terms that we used or that I used two years ago, even that now I'm like totally turned off by. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily turned off by the word mission, but I think that there's maybe other words that I don't have right now <laughs> that we could use. But but when I think about mission, I think that we've complicated it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think we've complicated what mission means and what mission is for sure. Yeah. Okay. Before we move on, I want to know what are the phrases, what are the Christianese phrases that you don't want to say anymore? I'll tell you. Oh, my, I, I've oh I have a huge one. Okay. I wonder if no, you, you go first. You go first. No, you go first. Okay. This is going to sound really weird. I actually feel it's so crazy because I've voiced it privately, but I've never said it publicly. I want to hear it. The word joy. Right? Yeah. Say more. I haven't really fully processed it, but just this past year, I feel like as we are literally, we've been fighting for quote unquote joy, right? In so many ways, it just hits me different now. And again, like I'm a work girl, you're a work girl. Mm -hmm. Like language is really, really important to me and communicating and the way that we communicate and how we use words to form language and thoughts and blah, blah, blah. 
That word joy, oh, and the way that we have used it in the church feels really plastic Yeah. to me. It feels yeah. really commercialized. Yeah. Right. Do you, does that make sense? It does. It's interesting. I'm very interested about joy. Mm-hmm. I don't feel, I'm very interested about it. And I would say for me, the pandemic did bring it up. I remember like maybe August, September, like a few months into the pandemic, I remember saying to Nick a lot, like, I want to understand joy. Mm-hmm. I do not mm-hmm. have joy. Mm-hmm. I have rhythms that make me yes. feel safe. Yes. And now they're gone. So what is joy? But that's it. That's a good one. Like, I think that's a good one to watch. What do we mean when we say that? Okay, mine is way more obnoxious. And like, it's, I mean, just- like, Oh, there are many others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody should say this one. And that is love on them. Ooh. Like, oh, we're just going to love on them. Ooh, what does that mean? Ooh, like, no, no, thank you. I don't want you to- <laughs> Also, <love>. like, you. <laughs> Ew, no. Do we <laughs> hear ourselves sometimes when we say these things? So right. You're in the Northwest, but I'm in the South. So it feels really common like to be like, oh, mm. we're going to go to Rachel's house and we're going to love on her. You didn't do it with the Southern accent, though, did you? <laughs> did you just yeah. do that? Yeah. Did you not hear it? That's what yeah, I did. <laughs> Rachel, we're going to love on you tonight. No, Rachel. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Did Rachel ask to be loved on? On, I love on her. We're going to put some love on you? Like, <laughs> What? <laughs> okay, do you have another one? Because now, I, now I'm stuck. I gotta. Talk Better about. together. Are you? <laughs> Sometimes some you're not. not. Some of y'all need to not be together. <laughs> some of y'all are worse together. Throw them away. I feel like we should have a whole like series, actually a whole other podcast called Throw This Thing Away, where it's like just terms that we should never use in the church ever again. <laughs> Better, better together. together. Okay, I made a sweatshirt at my company that said better together. So like, I bet I'm you a did. This. I'm a part of the problem. You are you are a perpetuator <laughs> of this issue. Some people are better together. You know what's better together? You and me on this podcast. It's true. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Okay, mission. I'll tell you what's interesting to me about mission. When I use the word mission, I really don't necessarily inherently like always equate kingdom mindedness. And I will say, so I don't always equate Christian values to mission. Yeah. And I will say I have like heart eyes for women running on mission. Oftentimes it's not a kingdom minded mission. Period. Right. You know Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like the, I just, I just like women the who are like the church. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. me, I mean, somebody who wants to change the world. I love that. I think that for me, I'm the opposite. When I think mission, I have a hard time separating it from kingdom mission. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. So that's why it feels a little yeah. off to me. It's one of those words that I've noticed, especially at Go and Tell Gals, that people would be like, I don't um, you do anything with Go and Tell Gals because I'm not like a missionary. And I was like, mm. oh, 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 no, 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 no. We're not. Yesterday, I posted something about equipping women and the gal said, like, I'm not in ministry. And I was like, oh, mm. oh, oh, I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about women on mission. Yeah. But it is good to remember, like most people equate some kind of Christian value to this. That being said, I specifically want to equip Christian women who are running on mission. Yeah. And I love that endeavor. I love that we get to do that. Outside of like christian words, what does it look like to you? When you meet a woman and you're like, oh, she is on mission. What does it look like? Mm. Ah, guys, I mean, why do I want to cry? You know what? My mm. estrogen levels are really high also. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I just, I just cannot with myself right now. But I think that when I look at someone and I think, This woman is a woman who knows her purpose, who knows her station, who knows her value. It looks like someone who is both willing to move forward while also at the same time recognizing and dealing with her own brokenness, but being able to hold the tension in those two spaces and yet embrace the mission, if you will. Yeah, yeah. There's something really powerful about that to me when you can, you know, I think it's different when you see, because we, I mean, come on, social media, like we see all of these women, lots of women who I think in some ways have the wrong idea of what success is and, um, 
you know, it's making money or millions of dollars or, you know, growing their business to multiple locations, whatever, you know, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with those things, you know, in and of themselves inherently. But I think that when we look at mission and we do connect it to kingdom, we know that there's a greater value and purpose in the things that we do and how God uses the gifts that he places in us. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think that when I look at a woman and when I see someone that I think with my experiences and all of my life, it doesn't always mean that she's making a lot of money or that she's built, you know, a fortune 500 company running on mission. For me, when I look at someone or when someone is, um, when I think someone is running on or doing a, a, this, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without sounding like I'm like being prideful, you know, or again, words, sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're hard. But I think that it's really special to see someone who fully embraces their brokenness and their humanity, but is learning how to not focus on that and make that center and centering the right thing, which is kingdom, God, Jesus, mission. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Something I want to go back to that you said that I just have like a really like interestingly personal example of like right at the beginning when you were talking about mission, you said like she's able to access her own weakness, her own Mm -hmm. brokenness. Mm -hmm. So I have a new friend in my life. I won't say her name just because I haven't asked her permission, but I have a new friend in my life that I actually met a moment where she was experiencing a lot of weakness. It was like a really tender kind of broken, just moment, just day. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be there. It was how Mm -hmm. we met. It was like a movie type meeting. I happened Mm -hmm. to be there and was able to like, you know, just be on her team for a minute the way any normal human would that like yeah. loves women and wants good <laughs> for them. But really quickly in to our friendship, which began that day, I'm just talking 48 hours, 36 hours. I could perceive like, this is a woman who is on mission. Mm. So that initial moment of weakness, of course, I mean, I'm a woman who can, who's very in touch with my own weakness. So it wouldn't have like put me off from wanting to be her friend or wanting to be in her life. But it was so interesting that I, that the way God wrote our story and meeting is that I was able Mm. to like see both really quickly when I would tell people, she just started going to our church. When I would tell them about her, like, you got to meet her. She is on mission. She is like a rally gal for the kingdom. And like, she works a secular job. She doesn't work in ministry. She is a single mom, but there were just like these little snippets of her life that I could tell, wow, you are in it. You want to use what you've got for the good of others and the glory of God. And in spite of, right? In spite of. of, yeah. And so I think there's something to be said for, yeah, let's get loud about that. Being a woman on mission does not mean you don't have weak moments mm-hmm, and it doesn't mm-hmm. mean you stuff them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you're like hashtag boss, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because let's be honest, Agreed. a lot so, of those women are really struggling. Yes. There's and a lot of feel, pressure feel that like comes frauds. along with those. Yes. It yeah. comes back to even the question, like, how do you deal with imposter syndrome if women mm. on mission, women online, yeah. women who are stepping into ministry or business or anything? So like, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? I say like, don't fake it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You will only feel like an imposter if you believe the lie that you at any point have to be an expert or have it together or be a hero. Yeah. If you don't accept the premise of the of that whole scenario, then you'll never feel like an imposter. Right. No, you're not wrong. I think something that you said actually made me think a little bit. And it was, I think you said, oh, I looked at her and I thought, wow, she's a woman who's on mission. What do we say to women who hear that and think, gosh, I'm not on mission. You know, when the shame comes in those moments where you're comparing essentially your life and what yeah. whatever it is that you're called to do to the life of someone else. Like, how do we here meet those women and say like, no, 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 no. Let me speak to that shame. Cause I, you even posted, I think a few weeks ago, shame off you. Right. So mm-hmm. like, how do we help women release this idea that everyone's mission essentially looks the same or that theirs isn't the way it should be or. Yeah. Let's do that in Jesus name. Thank you God for this podcast. Cause that's what we get to do. (laughs) 
I think let's do it. And maybe I'll say this up front. Let me just say this, which I, I know you know this. I know Brenna, our producer knows this, but I want the listener to also know as well. What <laughs> I'm about to say, I don't know that I'm right about. So if I'm wrong, I will expect and will be blessed by you saying like, I don't think that's it. So I think that it's a really helpful thing for us to naturalize, normalize what mission means. So yes. I, I'm saying like, you can be a barista on mission. Yep. You can be a mom on mission. You can be a writer on mission. You can be a college student on mission. You can be a hairstylist on mission. I believe all of those things, like genuinely with all that I've got. This is the part that I'm not sure mm. I'm right about. I also think there's the capacity to just not be on mission, mm-hmm. to be doing things, even sometimes, you know, potentially really important looking things, but mm-hmm. to be building your own kingdom. Yes. Or Ooh, to that's be a like, whole episode or two or three. Maybe, but to also be like, I feel like I'm in a place where I'm like, sometimes I think if there are women who hear that and think like, oh, I don't know if I'm on mission. Sometimes I think that that there may be like conviction in in that, that we might need to have because we're doing a lot of like critiquing or like sideline commentating. Yes. And to some degree, I think it's helpful to say like commentating is not always running on mission. Right. Right. Do I, does that sound right or wrong? Really? It sounds like that's a thought that you have that is neither right nor wrong. Okay. <laughs> you're good at that. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't think that you're right or wrong. I think that you're somewhere right there in the middle. And I think that thought can definitely help people be able to discern where they are in some regard. Yeah. Right. Because I do think that there is something really important. You know, here's the thing. Those moments of condemnation, shame that come in that say, you're not doing things the way that she's doing. And because you're not doing the way these things, the way that she's doing them, you are bad or, you know, not successful or whatever the lie is. I think that we have an opportunity there, right? Yeah. We have an opportunity to choose to believe the lie or we have an opportunity to lean into it and process kind of what you're saying, which is maybe that spot in me that feels that way is actually because I'm not on mission. Or maybe I'm not like accessing it. Totally. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Because I don't think that it's possible for like someone to need to change their life to be on mission. I think that would mean you're probably... Definitely not in going in the right direction if you have right. to like, alter. It, it could be a snap of the fingers of like, hey, you're in it already. Yes. Just like, let's wake up and like, and, and experience it. Perspective shift. That's, yes. I think, I think you're talking that out help me. I think that, that women even really have the capacity. I mean, because this is what we say all the time at Go and Tell Girls, right? You're changing the world. Like you just yes. are. You yes. just are. You, yes. You you're being. The, you yes. are being, you are shifting yes. it. If you don't see anyone, if you don't speak to anyone, you are shifting the way earth happens today. Absolutely. So you don't really have a capacity to not do that. It's just how awake are you to yeah. it? How much do you enjoy it? Yes. I like that. I like the How awake are you to your mission? Yeah. How awake are you to the way that you move and navigate through the space that you have been given authority over, if you will, like how, which is another Christianese word, probably how much authority are you taking over the space that you've been called to? Yeah. I think we could probably use that maybe as a definition of mission as well. Producer, how is this sitting with you? How is this sounding to you? (laughs) Yeah, I for sure agree. I immediately thought when y'all started talking about that, that verse that says like, I could do all these things, but if I don't have love, it's worth nothing. And I think that mission can be similar. Like I can do a lot of things that look impressive and shiny, but if not to the glory of God and for the good of others, then what good is it? And I think that is maybe the shift that I see in mission. Mm. Like how awake are you to it? How much are you moving to the glory of God and using the spaces that you have to the glory of God? Yes, I love that. That's good. Okay, so here's my next question. How important do you think it is that women are able to clearly define their current season of mission? (sighs) How important, you know, as an Enneagram eight wing seven. Yes. Yes. 
The seven in me actually loves to embrace the freedom that comes sometimes in not having definition, not having boxes and boundaries and just letting life be and letting me exist in a space that isn't comfortable and that doesn't make sense and that isn't defined. I've had a lot of that in my life where I've felt like yeah. I am not on mission because I am not doing. And so yeah. my personality is such that now if I feel as though I am striving or working toward mission, then I will immediately pull back because I know yeah. from experience that that is a very dangerous space for me. How important is it? I think it's really important to recognize that sometimes you won't feel like you're on mission. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your mission is to just be with Jesus for a season, yeah. like literally just focus on, not that we're not always focusing on him, but maybe everything else just shuts down and all that's left is him. And all that's left is, you know, communing with him and being with him and leaning into him. And from that, out of the overflow of that, you learn more of what the next season holds as far as mission is concerned. I think that That's there's good. space for that as well. So I'll give it not necessarily opposite, but just a different perspective. I am an Enneagram eight wing seven and my eight bosses my seven around and only lets her out every <laughs> once in a while, mostly not for anything fun, just for um, fear <laughs> purposes. And I hate pain. And that's really the only yeah. seven wing that gets to come out. But I will say this, I think the way that my mind works, the way that my mind and the way that my flesh works, like the mm -hmm. way God's mm -hmm. made me. Mm -hmm. I think because I'm a person who is able to access my own weakness very mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. I am, what's that hymn, prone to wander, yes. Lord, I feel it. Yes. If I could write my own hymn, it would be prone to quit, Lord, I give up. Like Listen. that would be like the very natural flesh hymn yes. in my heart. Yes. And what I have found is that clearly defined mission, not that it is important, maybe important was the wrong word. Not that it like makes me better, mm -hmm. but that it helps me not quit. Yeah. No, Does that, that makes complete sense. You know, Absolutely. It helps me not quit. So for example, I'll give you two like clearly defined missions for me. Number one, the way I use the internet is my mission in using Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any of it is I want to leave my generation more in awe of God than I found it. Yep. So that's the boundary lines that God's given me. So if I'm making it about me, if I'm wanting people to be in awe of me, then I'm doing it wrong. And so that helps me. So on the days when I want to quit, like I told you today, when I got a rude DM today, when I'm like, <laughs> forget it, I'm out. Like, I don't need this. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm fine. I'll live my own life. I don't need Instagram. I remember, hey, the goal is to leave my generation more and mm. all than of God that I found them and they happen to live on Instagram so I can talk about God to them. So I'll stay there or mine for the church for leading our church here in Charleston, bright city, again, prone to quit Lord. I give up. If that were my song, I'm just constantly like, are we done? God, can we, are we done with this? Actually? I, I think I told you this is going to be your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I think it's been a fun experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Just if it gets the slightest bit hard and but God has given me this overall mission that I want to see the renewal of the American church. Yes. And so when I remember, I want to see the renewal of the American church, which, mm -hmm. which means I want to see it like rehabilitated. I want to see it revitalized. Yes. I want to see renewal. I want to see men and women working together better. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want to see people expecting healthy things of the church and not expecting unhealthy things from it. And I want to see less leaders falling and I want to see less secrets. And, you know, I want mm -hmm. to see all that. Mm -hmm. So that, that keeps me rolling. So maybe the question isn't like, do you have to have clear definition in your God-given mission? But like, what do you need? Yeah. Do you need a season of freedom where like the, maybe the mission is just like, enjoy God right, and let him enjoy you. Maybe is that, does the mission need to be really clearly defined? Because I would say there are other parts of my life where I like you, I'm like, I need a lot of freedom here. Yeah. And the goal yeah. needs to be like, just showing up. I would say that's my case for motherhood. Yes. I keep trying to write 1000%. Uh, like, 
Yeah. I keep trying to write like family mission statements <laughs> and I finally landed on all get across the finish line, loving each other and loving God. For That's real. <laughs> For real. Like, I don't think we're going to be the kindest. I don't think we're going to be the most servant hearted. I don't think we're going to be the best Jesus. neighbors, apparently. We're not going to be the tidiest. We don't have the best family conversations. We don't go on the best vacations. <laughs> We've never worn a matching outfit. Like we don't get places on time, but like we're going to get across the finish line, loving each other and loving God as Come much on. as I can help it. Yes. Yes. And that's pretty loose. I think that that's more than enough, honestly. It's working. I think it's now. beautiful. And then you release all the pressure. All the so maybe gone. what we're saying is you are on mission. Yes. You are on mission. You are. Dear listener, are you awake to it? Hmm. I just really like that. I like that phrase. I think you said it. Or maybe no, I you it. did. You no. did. Kudos. Do you see what it is? Do you need definition around it? Is that what you crave? Is that how God and you communicate best? Mm -hmm. And if so, we want to hear it. Even if you're like, you know what? I just want freedom. I just want to like have no boundaries and and be Hello, open and free with seven. him. Like, we want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So good. My seven strong. Yours is. Yeah. My seven is strong. Yeah. My you said your eight is bossy. My, my seven, seven is in a bossy. headlock. <laughs> she's like shh, shh, don't talk <laughs> no fun <laughs> okay this has been helpful is there anything you're looking forward to in your god-given mission right now i just really feel a lot of growth and a lot of stepping out of something you talked about earlier which is fear mm. and i just feel this prompting from the Holy Spirit challenging me or calling me out of a place of fear in my giftings, in the ways that he's called me to express them. So I am excited for what the other side of that looks like, honestly, in the years to come, this year and in the years to come. So good. I'm looking forward to a really heavy season of mission. Mm. with some free and light boundaries. Mm. The next few months for me are going to be the most intense I've had in a few years, mission-wise. And I think I have a newfound sense of what's mine to hold and what's not. Mm, that's that, that, that's freedom. So I think this is going to be fun. I think I'm looking forward to that. So what you're saying actually is that your seven is going to come out of the headlock. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I told you I didn't respond to that unkind DM today, which yeah. it, seriously, it was a huge growth. Uh, big growth. This was a habitual unkind DMer who does not follow me, just sends me unkind messages. Just there to stir and the pot. Just there to stir the pot. And every time I respond to her in depth. Like really trying to explain myself, which is not my business. That's that is not my so goal. also not just not you. Like oh. what? I know that's not your. That's stay in stay in your lane. That that's not, not your lane, Brenda. What about you? When I think about what I'm looking forward to, Jess, you know this about me. My word for the year, thought for the year, whatever is daughter. Like, what does it mean to be a daughter? What does it mean to live like a daughter? I keep saying this kind of cheesy phrase, like. What if I lived like my dad actually has the keys to the kingdom? Because I think he does. I think I lived a lot of 2020 not living that way. I was for sure the victim of everything that was happening to me. Mm. So I am looking forward to wow. mission as a daughter, like where the places he sent me and not in my striving, not in my over concern and not in my stress and not in my panic, but like, and not in my fear, but where has he sent me because he loves me and because he cares about me. And how can I live on mission in those spaces? So good. I feel like I'm learning it now and I'm eager for the rest of 2021 because I think this is the most connected I've felt to my word for the year ever. And so I'm excited to see what God does with it. I absolutely I love, love it. that yeah. so much. All right. Well, just another really life-giving conversation about mission. We want to hear from you guys. Tell us email us podcast at goandtellgals.com. We want to hear what does mission look like for you? Maybe we'll read some responses in our next episode. We love you guys. Love you. 
Friends, thank you so much for joining us today. We are grateful that you were able to listen in. If you love this episode, would you do us a favor and leave a review so other friends can find this episode? We pray it encouraged you and left you feeling equipped to run on mission right where you're at. We're super grateful for you and we will see you next week.